Hi Bartonella buddies! Today I wanted to do a more casual video and I'm not gonna have bank voles popping up and words and stuff. I just wanted to give you a little update on what it's like to live with Bartonella and I'm gonna give you some good news and some bad news. So do you want the good news first or the bad news? What's that? Oh, okay, you wanna hear the good news? <laughs> So the good news is that I've created a new support group on Facebook for people suffering from Bartonellosis. And it's not my group only. I moderate it with two other women who've been big in the Bartonella and Lyme community for a while. And I would love for you to join my group on Facebook. It's called Breaking Down Bartonella. I see a hair floating. <laughs> It's called Breaking Down Bartonella, which I think is a very cute name. We know I love alliteration, and we're breaking it down intellectually, and we're breaking it down in our bodies because we're going to effing murder the Bartonella. This is a place where you can find resources, information, but you can also ask questions about diagnosis, treatment, testing. Why the hell does my fill in the blank here hurt like this? I ask questions there too. I don't know everything, even though I might seem like a know-it-all. <laughs> I'll try to answer the questions to the best of my ability and so will all the group members so we can just get through this horrible illness together. So if you want to join my group I'm gonna put a link to the Facebook group in the video description box and I will see you there. So now for the bad news. I get a lot of messages saying oh have you healed by now or you seem so much better like how did you do it? And the truth of the matter is, is that I'm still very, very sick despite all appearances otherwise. And I think it's hard to look at me and think, oh, that girl's super sick. But day to day is really a struggle. And sometimes it's hour to hour and sometimes it's minute to minute. And I just want to tell you sort of what has happened over the past three days. It's been the worst three days of my illness and and therefore the worst three days of my life. And it's almost like a blur. And also I'm never going to apologize for crying. I never apologize for crying. Crying's a human emotion and you can cry wherever you want. I've cried in restaurants. <laughs> I'm gonna cry on the internet. <laughs> I'll cry wherever. It's my right to cry. So, and it's not embarrassing. I was trying uh, this new antibiotic and in order to tolerate it, I was on a steroid. Um, that was to calm my mast cells down and that was um, just temporarily. The first part of the antibiotic course was going okay. But then I started to get increasingly more and more reactive to the antibiotics. So I stopped about three-fourths of the way through the course. That's not what you're supposed to do. You're always supposed to finish your antibiotic course. But I had to stop because of my increasing reactivity. And I did not take my steroid dose um, on time. I was about three hours late. My mom was working and she was in our office and she is a therapist. So she was doing Zoom-esque therapy in her but in her pajamas half. on the bottom half. <laughs> I started belching and my mast cell manifests mostly with belching and nerve pain. It's not just like, oh lol, like a burp here. My stomach fills to the brim with gas and my endoscopy showed um, inflammation of the esophagus, the stomach, and the duodenum. So it's already inflamed in there and when it fills to the brim with gas, I liken it to two balloons my stomach's the outer balloon, and the inside of the outer balloon is sunburnt, and then someone's blowing in the inner balloon, and the outside of the inner balloon is rubbing against the sunburnt inside of the outer balloon. And basically, my stomach fills to the brain with gas to the point where if I don't continuously belch and belch and belch, then I will throw up. It hurts my spine, it hurts the front of my chest, um, it hurts my throat, and I'm gonna put in a video of what I experienced. Oh, and trigger warning. I look like in this video like I'm about to throw up because I am, so if that's gonna make you throw up, maybe don't watch.
Uh. That went on for about an hour. I didn't know what was happening or what to do or what to take and thank god my mom came out and in between patients she has a 10 minute window and she injected my steroid into me. Oh and they are IM injections because I can't handle anything orally. Almost, almost nothing really. I can't go to the doctor's office to get like an IV steroid because COVID's happening so we learned how to do it at home. So my mom gave me my steroid and in about 45 minutes, all of that started to calm down, and then I started violently hiccuping, and the hiccups were so strong that it was making me burp, and so I'll show you a video of that now. <laughs> At least the burping's getting better. The hiccups kind of hurt. My stomach. <laughs> and then finally the ratio between burping and hiccuping went like this and then my friend told me to put a paper towel over a glass and to drink from it and I guess you're doing something different with your diaphragm or maybe you were distracted and my hiccuping stopped and when he told me to do that I was like that's bullshit but I'll try it and it worked so thank you Jake his oh. name's Jake. <laughs> so that was Tuesday, and Wednesday I took my steroid, and I was fine until about 2 a.m. when that whole thing started again, and I had no idea what to do. I had no idea if I should take more steroids. I took 50 milligrams of Benadryl. I took Dexalant, which is a proton pump inhibitor. It's like the Cadillac of PPIs. And I took a Pepsid, and I waited an hour, and none of that really touched it. I took another 50 milligrams of Benadryl. I also took Valium, which is a mast cell stabilizer. I was belching like that from about 2 a.m. to 5.30. We decided to give me seven more milligrams of Medrol. It calmed everything down and I fell asleep at 7 a.m. Then Thursday rolls around and, well actually, no, I'm already on Thursday because I fell asleep 7 a.m. Thursday. I take my steroids and about 2 a.m. it all wears off again and we give me seven milligrams. It doesn't touch it at all. Um, I try to take a bunch of pills. I throw them up. I, I don't mean a bunch of pills like random pills. I mean rescue meds. Um, <laughs> I threw them up. I tried to just take one Benadryl because I was like, well, maybe my stomach doesn't want, you know, several pills in it at once. Threw that up and I belched like that from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. At 6, we gave me another 15 milligrams of Medrol, and I finally went to sleep for about 30 minutes, and we went into the doctor's office, and thank God the PA was there to see me and help me, and we developed a plan to keep me on Medrol every eight hours to restabilize me, and then we will titrate down from there. And so that's where I am right now. Um, it was sort of a haze because I barely slept, barely ate, barely drank water. Now I'm just sort of like anytime any symptom pops up I'm like oh my god is that the Medrol wearing off? Is it gonna start happening again? Am I gonna have to go up on the steroids? Like do I have to continually go up and up and up? When does that stop? No one wants to be on steroids. I've been through a lot of medicines before going to steroids. I want people without Bartonellosis to know that it is, or it can be, devastating. And I want those of you with Bartonellosis to know that I'm still struggling. And, um, I'm playing the long game. I'm gonna get through it. One of my doctors says, you're gonna get better if you just keep trying. So, I just have to keep trying. You just have to keep trying. And you'll get there. You'll get there, you just have to keep trying. Did you wear all your waterproof makeup? I'm not wearing any waterproof makeup. <laughs> 
when's my shot? 4 45. Well, the earliest it would be is 5. It could be 5 30. We didn't totally make a decision. I think we were at least going to do 8 and a half. I kind of want to do 8 because. You feel something? It might be because I'm getting upset, but. It might be. So, do you have more to say? I just want to end up on a positive note. You're not alone. I'm not alone. If you feel alone, join our group and let's break down motherfucking Bartonella. And if you don't like my language, I don't care. Aww. I couldn't do any of this without you, Pipey. Subscribe to Jake's channel for more videos about Bartonella. Don't lick me, that's gross.